Next up, we have uh, Conrad Feldman, the co-founder and CEO of Quantcast. How many of you have ever gone to Quantcast, put in a site, check things out? I, I'm like, I do it all the time, habitually. Um, find it very, very useful. But there's a lot more going on besides just the ability to see uh, bare traffic. As a matter of fact, they have a very large data business. Um, and that data business is informing uh, the future of all of our business as marketers, and that's what Conrad's going to talk about. So without any more delay, Conrad, take it away. Good, good afternoon. After decades of experimentation and hard-fought progress, we're finally arriving at a, a golden age of artificial intelligence. The phrase, it's going to happen, no longer applies. It's happening, and it's happening all around us. Uh, these techniques love data, and our digital world creates more data than ever before. Combine that data with the sort of computational power that's now available to organizations, commercial organizations, the sort that was previously only available to governments, and we have significant advances uh, in these forms of, of technology. Some examples that have happened over the last 12 months. Watson. What is Event Horizon? Yes. Who is Grendel? Yes. What is The Last Judgment? Correct. Who is Lady Madonna? Correct. Watson, what is London? Correct. Victory by IBM's Watson on Jeopardy. And of course, that was a showcase for the technology that IBM had created. There's lots of other applications and problems this technology can be applied to. Uh, one example being done here in, in New York at, with uh, the Columbia Medical School is the application of this technology to medical diagnosis, presumably a Dr. Watson. But for some time, our medical field has been producing enormous amounts of data, more data than humans can really comprehend. Here's an example of the analysis of x-rays. It also applies to MRIs and CAT scans by Bartrand Software. This analyzes multiple images simultaneously looking for similarities between the pixels. In other words, better medical diagnosis. The success of Google's self-driving car and the use of algorithms to find the right music, the best stock, and even to make you into a gaming superstar. Today we want to showcase how artificial intelligence and how computational power are transforming the advertising industry and what we see coming in the next 24 months or so. You know, we pick 24 months because anybody who tells you they can know what's coming any further out is either lying to you or, or they're Donald Trump. <laughs> so let's, let's start by talking about why today's computers are so powerful. You don't need a computer science degree from MIT to understand the key difference between human beings and silicon. It can't be denied. We're amazing pattern matching machines. Play a game of chess with a precocious 10-year-old child, and you'll see how powerful our brains are at evaluating patterns. But consider this. The very best chess players in the world can, eva can evaluate three possible moves per second. Whereas in contrast, the deep blue computer that beat chess grandmaster Garry Kasparov all the way back in 1997 evaluated some 200 million positions per second. No human can do that. Not Einstein, not Bill Gates, not even John Battelle. <laughs> this isn't a competition anymore. That's, that's what's so powerful about this age of computing. Our computers can process more data more quickly than any machine ever previously invented. We all know we're in the needle in the haystack business. That's what advertising is about, finding and engaging the appropriate audience with the appropriate message from an abundance of choices. And digital media fragmentation is putting many more bales in that haystack. The number of choices we have is growing astronomically. And at the same time, the speed with which we have to make decisions uh, is increasing by orders of magnitude. The good news is, as these haystacks get larger, our ability to apply technology to make sense of them and to, to find the value, to find the needles at scale, and to move those needles where we want to get them to is improving even more rapidly. And because the industry is increasingly reliant upon enormous quantities of real-time data, I can make a prediction that I don't think is that bold. It's probably fairly safe. In the next 24 months, 
the future of display advertising, digital display advertising, which ultimately is going to incor incorporate most advertising. Certainly, everything we think of today in terms of television will be digital, will be shaped by those organizations that can apply sophisticated computational techniques and have the, su su uh, the supercomputing power to back it up. Here's a big number, $469 billion. That's actually the, the amount of money spent annually on advertising according to JP Morgan. Now to give you some, some sense of the scale of that number, um, the GDP of Poland is a little bit less than this. Poland is a country of nearly 40 million people. So it gives you some indication of, of how complex it is to produce or to spend this quantity of money. And, and it's worth bearing that in mind because as, as our media changes and the way we apply uh, advertising within that media environment changes, we have to be able to effectively spend large amounts of money. And as the number of decisions we're making grows, it makes it harder to spend that money. Consider another stat, 400,000. That's approximately, give or take, the number of real-time ad impressions that are traded in, in, in auctions around the world every second. And that number's growing dramatically. Think about the implications of this shift from making decisions about a few magazines, TV networks, or websites to considering hundreds of thousands of advertising opportunities every single second on a continual basis. And this number's growing significantly every month. Doing this is hard, really hard, and not hard in a, in a trivial way. Just think about how traditional media planning and buying has operated. We've had to make a handful of decisions over a period of perhaps several weeks. In this new world of real-time media, and real-time media is gonna to come to dominate the majority of ad impressions that are, that are actually served up to consumers. We have to make hundreds of thousands of decisions per second, billions of decisions per day, and each of those decisions has to be made in milliseconds. Uh, but real progress has been made, and the, the qualities that will, that will make firms stand out, the, the survivors of the now infamous uh, uh, Luna, Luma Partners slide, will be the companies that are able to apply sophisticated algorithmic technology at scale in real time. And it's these technologies and these characteristics, if you like, the rules of engagement, that will separate the wheat from the chaff, just as we seek to separate the needles from the haystack in advertising. And the things that are gonna be really important, first and foremost, real-time interconnectivity. Um, this is not a matter of now making a few phone calls, it's connecting to systems and data centers all around the world and be able to make decisions in, in milliseconds, um, making hundreds of thousands of decisions every second. Data is at the core of this real-time media economy. Data about who your customers are, data about the best prospects and what makes them the best prospects, and something to keep in mind. Much of, much of what is talked about in terms of data thinks of it somewhat naively. People talk about data as a list of cookies. What use is the who without the where, the when, or the how much? And one of the things to consider with digital media is that media is data. And those that consider media holistically in terms of information about people and the environment, both its quality and the context and so on, will make better decisions. The number of decisions that need to be made here are, are far too extreme for humans to be making them. This is not about uh, Gary Kasparov playing Deep Blue. This is about your average casual chess player up against Deep Blue's big brother. And so the application of machine learning and sophisticated optimization techniques are gonna really come to the fore. And lastly, it takes the sort of computing environments that, as I mentioned earlier, historically were only available to the likes of, of government agencies and, and, and such as you know, NASA. Um, to give you some idea of, of petabyte scale computing, uh, in 2008 it was reported that Google processed over 20 petabytes of data every day. Just think what it is today. Uh, last year AT&T carried an average of 19 petabytes of data a day across their network. It was reported Apple recently purchased 12 petabytes of storage for their, for their iCloud initiative so that they can stream, stream media. And Quantcast, a relatively small company that, that launched a little over four years ago, processes in excess of three petabytes of data every day. Now, for those of you that, that aren't engineers or computer scientists, to give you a feel for you know, the scale of a petabyte, consider this. It's been estimated that the entire published works of humankind, every book, every magazine, every newspaper, every piece of music, every television show, every single film, from the begin beginning of recorded history, 
in every language could be stored in 50 petabytes of data. It's a brave new world for sure, but one that offers exceptional relevance for consumers and performance for advertisers. And don't forget, real-time media, however complex it might be, is still media. Quality content and engaged consumers matter as much as ever. Thank you for your time. I'm available for questions afterwards, but if you don't have time to see me, uh, you can contact me via email here. Thanks very much.